against who's ready for wildlife snap. What's on the map? Find it and snap! Hi everyone, I'm Bargo MJ and I'm here to find out if these wildlife species can still be found at Changi Beach. Okay, here are the rules. At this intertidal zone, we may find these wildlife. Some are common while some are hard to find. And if we are lucky, we may even spot these rare species. I wonder what this is. There's only one way to find out. Let's snap! And for today's challenge, four echinoderms, four mollusks, two cnidarians, two crustaceans and one fish. Good morning, it's 7am, I am at Changi Beach ready to feed my trusty little yellow camera and this zone will be my feeding ground for today. There is an extremely low tide happening right now. It's perfect for finding many of these marine creatures which can only be seen at low tide. When it comes to a totally different environment like the intertidal zone, we get to see a bunch of different families of animals that usually cannot be found inland. Fishes, crustaceans, mollusks, echinoderms and cnidarians. We will start higher up the shoreline, looking for wildlife all the way to the edge of the seagrass patch. Let's go! There's so much grass down there, but they are not just any type of grass. They are a special grass known as seagrass. These seagrasses are the only flowering plants that can grow while submerged in seawater. See that small round bump over here? They look vaguely round, right? That means there's probably a sand dollar buried underneath. Sand dollars are amazing sea creatures that look like flat, round coins. This is an echinoderm, a family of animals in which sea stars and sea cucumbers are part of. Yes, sand dollars are actually a type of sea urchin that can be found on sandy ocean floors. Okay, let's head over to the star of the show, the seagrass meadow. Seagrasses are different from the land grasses that we are more familiar with. Seagrasses are like the whales of the plant world. They started out as land plants millions of years ago but moved back into the sea. Seagrass meadows, like the one we are standing on right now, are like underwater rainforests. Just like how our rainforests are important habitat to many organisms, these seagrass beds are home to a great diversity of wildlife, including the ones that we are going to find today. They provide their resident organisms with food and shelter. This includes baby animals, which can hide from predators among the thick covering of leaves. <gasps> Look! There's a moving razor clam over here! Razor clams are cool shellfish that live in sandy beaches, and they look like tiny little razors, which is how they got their name. Clams and snails are part of the mollusk group that also includes slugs, octopuses and cuttlefish. They have long, smooth shells and can dig very quickly into the sand to hide away from the waves and predators. Look at these big round things around me! They're actually living things called carpet anemones. Carpet anemones are colourful sea anemones that look like beautiful underwater carpets. Anemones may not look like animals, but they are. They are under the family of cnidaria, which also includes corals and jellyfishes. They have a white, flat body covered in hundreds of tiny tentacles that wave in the water to help the anemone catch fruit like small fishes and shrimps. Come guys, see that little fin over there? Let's take a closer look. Fang clams are called fang clams because if you see the other end of the clam, it tapers down, creating a fan-like shape. These clams live on the ocean floor, opening their fan-shaped shells to filter tiny food particles from the water. Sometimes, if you look inside these fang clams, you'll also find other wildlife hiding inside. Oh, there's a cowrie inside here! This one has a crab! Stone crabs are powerful looking crustaceans known for their huge pincers, which they use to crush shelled prey and protect themselves from predators. Crustaceans are a family of animals that have hard exoskeletons. You can find shrimps, lobsters, crabs and even barnacles in this family. These crabs like to hide in rocky areas, which is why they are called stone crabs, but they can be found tucked into little corners like within the clam as well. <gasps> a star! Nobly sea stars are also known as the chocolate chip sea star because of the black little knot on its body. While adults are often red in colour, the young of the nobly sea stars are actually green, 
perhaps to camouflage with the seagrass environment for better protection. This is one of my favourite stars in Singapore. Bye-bye! That is the biggest hermit crab I have ever seen. Hermit crabs are known to use empty shells from snails to protect its soft body on the other end. As they grow, they need to find bigger shells which are harder to find. This is also one of the reasons why we try not to remove shells from the beach because it could be a new home for the hermit crabs. Oh, I see something moving there! Remember the carpet anemone that we saw earlier on? This is yet another special anemone that can swim! If you see a tiny mob drifting up and down in the water, that's probably a swimming anemone. Most sea anemones are stationary and don't move around much, but these anemones can move by using their tentacles to swim and catch food. If not, they will usually be found loosely attached to seaweeds or seagrasses. Some of the plant-like things that we see on the seagrass meadows are not even seagrasses at all. Like this one! This is actually not a seagrass, but a seaweed. Seaweeds belong to a whole other kingdom of life altogether. While seagrasses are true plants, seaweeds are actually a type of marine algae which are not plants. Some seagrasses and seaweeds may look quite similar, but you can generally tell them apart by looking for their veins. Seagrasses have veins in their leaves, while seaweeds don't have any veins at all. Although seaweeds aren't plants, a lot of interesting wildlife can be found on them, like this leaf stuck over here. This delicate leaf-looking creature is an ornate leaf slug. Ornate leaf slugs love to eat algae and are often found in shallow waters. With its bright green and orange patterns, it can blend in with seaweed and plants to stay safe from predators. Tide is coming in soon, so let's hurry! This seaweed is a host algae for... Shaun the Sheep Slug! What exactly is it? Let's take a closer look. The strawberry slug is also known as Shaun the Sheep Slug due to its resemblance to the main character of the popular cartoon series. Did you know that this slug can take in the chloroplast from the algae it feeds on to make its own food through photosynthesis? They store the chloroplast within their own bodies and that's why they have these green protruding bits on their back. Really cute, right? Okay, we're going to head further out to see if we can find any more wildlife. Sometimes you can find bushy slugs, moon-headed side gilt slug, and if you're very lucky, you can even find nudibranchs. Like the cow nudibranch here! Cow nudibranchs are colourful sea slugs that look like little underwater cows with their unique patterns on their bodies. They love to eat sponges that have toxins in them and they can actually store these toxins in special areas on their backs to help keep away predators. Okay, we are approaching the promised big sandy shore. I'm really excited about the things we can find here. Sandy shores, as its name suggests, is made up of, well, sand. But the wildlife here burrows really well to hide away from predators due to the lack of hiding spots. Just like this sand star here! Unlike other more colourful sea stars, the plain sand stars are usually in a plain, brownish-grey colour which helps them blend in with the sandy ocean floor. Their flat bodies and sharp spines are also specially adapted for living in sandy environments, allowing them to move easily across the sea floor. They also use their cute feet to burrow themselves into the sand and disappear. Sandy shores like this can be found on almost every single beach in Singapore. They may look lifeless at first, but with a little bit of patience, you can find many wildlife hanging around here. Oh look! It's a huge noble volute sea snail. Noble volutes are beautiful sea snails with patterned, spiral-shaped shells that can be quite large. You can often find them either burrowed in the sand or cruising slowly with its siphon sticking out. Noble volutes are carnivorous and they hunt prey such as clams by enclosing them in its huge foot before slowly feeding on them with its raspy tongue. Wow, so magnificent! Oh, there's a sea cucumber here just rolling around in the sand! These bright pink creatures are hard to miss out on the sandy shore. They are the pink warty sea cucumbers. They have rows of tiny tube feet and bumps along its body that look like warts. These sea cucumbers use their bright colours to warn predators that they contain toxin. You hear that? Look up! The white-bellied sea eagle is a majestic bird of prey found near oceans and other water bodies. 
It has a striking white belly and dark brown wings, making it easy to spot as it soars through the sky. These eagles are excellent hunters, using their sharp eyesight to spot fish swimming in the water below. When they see a potential meal, they will swoop down with incredible speed to catch it with their strong talons. Wow, I'm glad we get to see such a majestic bird! One very important family of animals we have yet to talk about in the intertidal zone are the fishes. Look at all these baby fishes! Here in these shallow tight pools, they are safe from bigger predators which are too large to assess these puddles of water. Speaking about fishes, I think I found one of the rarer and more special fishes around here. It's a seahorse! The seahorse is not a horse, it is a fish! Unlike most other fishes, the seahorses have bent necks, long snouted heads and curly tails making them one of the slowest swimmers on the planet. They are often found in seagrass areas as they will use their tails to cling onto the plants, keeping them safe from currents and predators. I'm so glad we managed to find this amazing animal today! Alright, my memory card is full and we have officially gotten too much wildlife in today's wildlife snap! In today's adventure, we have seen hidden sand creatures, cute stars and even an anemone that swims. And this has to be my favourite snap! What is yours? As we review the snaps we took, do remember to respect nature and give them space when you are out observing them. There's so much wildlife for you to find, so if you are interested in looking for these amazing animals yourself, feel free to head out and explore. Until next time! <laughs>